Hey guys, Happy New Year and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In case it's your first time, hey there, this is Mikey and I'm here to help you apply concepts for making a difference. In this channel, I'll be discussing and breaking down concepts regarding GIS, remote sensing, data analytics, machine learning, and data visualization in the form of simple and easy to follow video tutorials. And this year I'll be uploading a video daily. Therefore, if you're into any of these topics, make sure to subscribe. This video is gonna be about the basic differences between discrete return LiDAR and full waveform LiDAR. I'll be comparing some of their advantages and disadvantages here and this should help you decide which is the best one for your particular study. If you haven't already watched my previous video on intro to LiDAR, I highly recommend watching that before getting into this one. You can find the link in the description section below. As we discussed in the last video, LiDAR can be classified based on multiple aspects. Earlier we talked about airborne, terrestrial and spaceborne LiDAR and now we will classify LiDAR based on how the returns are recorded. Now let's talk about my favorite topic which is forestry and let's consider these trees and also bring in an old rusty aircraft. Before that I want to mention that based on the LiDAR footprint size we can have either large footprint LiDAR or small footprint LiDAR. The large footprint LiDAR devices are usually attached to satellite or aircraft but most commonly used one is a small footprint LiDAR and these systems are usually attached to aircrafts or even drones. Now back to the discrete return and full waveform LiDAR. Let's take the case of this tree and assume that we are trying to laser scan this portion within the blue box. In case of the full waveform LiDAR, the return will look something like this. The return signal is plotted as a function of time and is more or less continuous and the range resolution depends on the specifics of the sensor. Herein the range resolution is related to the minimum distance that is required between two targets for them to have been identified by the signal. As you know, in case of LiDAR, how we calculate the distance and other related parameters is based on the time taken by the return pulses. So for the range resolution, it will be usually represented in nanoseconds. In the above case, if the timings are too close, then we might not be able to separate out the two objects from the signal. This might be the case with dense forests where there are overlaps in branches and it might be hard to separate out the multiple branches from the signal if they are too close. In case of waveform LiDAR, since the entire echo is recorded, we have a lot of data on the landscape and this means that there should be more useful information that can be extracted and that's the primary advantage with this kind of LiDAR. On the waveforms that we collect, we should be able to perform stratification and separate out different layers of canopy and calculate various forest attributes such as canopy cover, canopy heights and so on. However, the drawback here is that the data processing is very complex and you will need a really powerful computer if you want your task to be done in a short time and without crashing. Also, we need to decide on a suitable threshold while saving the raw LiDAR data because you don't want to save the entire thing as a lot of it will be just unusable data. Here by unusable data, I mean, uh, for example, this can be due to weak pulses. Maybe some pulses are not strong enough to acquire enough information of the object illuminated or it can be due to issues such as haze or clouds or dust particles in the atmosphere. So while interpreting data and using deconvolution algorithms, you need to be extra careful to make sure that the obtained results are realistic. Full waveform LiDAR data is not that commonly used or made publicly available due to the reasons mentioned before. However, in the past four to five years, there have been a lot of new initiatives in this direction. One organization you might want to look into in this regard is NEON, which stands for National Ecological Observatory Network. 
They have made available a lot of useful and diverse LiDAR datasets in the past few years. I shall include a link to their website in the description section. And I had also made a video on how to download other freely available LiDAR datasets before and I shall include a link to that video as well. Another most recent Waveform LiDAR initiative is the NASA Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation or in short NASA Jedi. This is one of my favorite datasets and in fact I spend most of my time these days exploring this. It's freely available and provide a wealth of information on world's forest and vegetated landscapes. And I'll be uploading a couple of videos on how to download and analyze NASA Jedi from scratch in the coming days. Hence, don't forget to subscribe if you're interested. Now let's move on to the discrete return ladder, which is in fact the more popular one. But before that, if you guys are finding value in this video, please smash that like button so that YouTube can recommend this video to other like-minded people. And also please feel free to leave a comment on how I can improve my video so that I can provide you with better contents in the future. So the standard discrete return LiDAR sensors allow you to measure three to four returns per pulse. The pulses here kind of represent the peaks in energy. In the figure, you can see that there are three separate returns happening. Usually the last return will be the bare soil if the canopy is kind of open. The advantage here is that it is relatively less time consuming and easy to process the data and also interpret the final results. Whereas the disadvantage is that a lot of information can be lost in the process as we are only taking measurements of the peak points in energy. This will leave empty black portions in areas where we don't have enough data points. For example, in the 3D point cloud demonstration, you can see that the areas near the stem are kind of dark. In general, waveform LiDAR is found to provide better vertical structural detail than discrete return LiDAR and are especially more useful when we are considering larger study areas. For example, in case if you want to study the entire Amazonia, you won't be able to get later data for the entire area using an airborne survey and will have to resort to something like a spaceborne waveform LiDAR. Even then, the discrete return LiDAR is catching up over the years and now we have very high density LiDAR platforms available. One similar system I work with these days is the Gatorade which is an initiative from some of my colleagues at the University of Florida and you can request for free high density LiDAR data there. Uh, I shall include a link to that website too in the description. And one another thing to note is that for both waveform and discrete return LiDAR, it is possible to determine the XY coordinate. In case of discrete return LiDAR, you might also find C values as a LiDAR attribute. This usually represents the elevation here. So that's it for now. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to learn anything specific about any of these LiDARs mentioned so that I can include the topic in the upcoming videos. The next video is gonna be on Spaceborne LiDAR and NASA Jedi and you'll be able to find the video link here on the screen once the video is up. As you know, this month's topic is LiDAR and the link to the playlist will be provided in the description section. So make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss out on any of the LiDAR related videos. SLS Toto for now. Keep hustling guys. Till next time. Ciao.